everyone, it's Ashley and I'm back with another video. Today we're going to create a beautiful fall Dollar Tree banner and we're going to master the technique of adding iron on vinyl to burlap. So this is a really great technique and you can take something that's inexpensive and transform it. This is only about $4 in Dollar Tree supplies to create a really beautiful banner and there's so much you can do to personalize it and customize it for your home. So if you haven't yet, click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future content. Hey guys, so we're in the desktop version of Cricut Design Space and I'm typing up some words here that I'm going to use for my banner. Um, I'm creating a fall banner and I really wanted to have a very casual um, kind of classic farmhouse look. So I'm using the font Aquifer. And this is the same type of font that you can find on uh, Joanna Gaines um, branding and merchandise for her store. And I think this is really lovely. It has a very casual look. I thought it would be perfect for what we're going for. And I'll leave a link below to defont.com where you can download the font for free. All I'm doing here is I'm going to size this approximately to the size of the Dollar Tree leaves that we're using. So I pre-measured and they're approximately three inches in height. Um, by two inches in width in the available space within the leaf. So I'm going to make sure that I'm going to the right sizing here. We want to make it close, not, not quite to the three uh, inches in height. I'm going to say about 2.75 right in that range. And what I'm going to do is take this and we're going to ungroup it now and what we're going to do is look at the letters individually so we're going to make sure that the width of this falls within that two inch width and that three inch height so that one's looking good that one's looking good that one's good so all of these should work within that size range and now what we can do is take these to the mat and cut them and we're going to use this as iron on because it's just going to be the easiest to apply with some heat and of course it rearranges all the letters for you into the most uh, convenient way for the machine to cut it and still save extra materials because this is going to be iron on we are going to mirror it so we'll just click mirror and then we're going to click continue and we're going to connect to our machine the only difference is on this step for each machine is if you're using the joy, it'll ask if you're cutting without a mat and which material you're using. If you're asking on the maker, it automatically asks you which material you're going to use. And on the Explorer Air 2, you can either set the dial to the material that you're using or you can set it to custom and then select which material. So I'm going to select the everyday iron on and then click done. And it just asks us to make sure that mirror is turned on, which it is. And we're going to make sure our iron on material is shiny side down. Okay, so we're gonna load this slightly differently than I normally would load them. Usually I use a full sheet of iron on. Right now I'm low on iron on, so I'm using some of my little mini rolls that I have. And what I'm doing is I'm just gonna take this shiny side facing down and apply this to the mat here. I went ahead and already adjusted on my mat on the computer to the point where um, I moved the leftover letter that would have been down here to the six inch mark so that way I can use another piece there. So this will cover the bulk of what I'm cutting for the banner and then I will have another letter right here. So I'm just going to use the leftover here on this section and it should be fine. The machine is ready to load, so let's make sure that we have everything attached here. We have the right blade inserted, and we're going to load it into the machine here. We're going to go ahead and unload the mat and close up our machine. To unload our mat, we're going to turn it over and we're going to roll the mat away from our project. 
And now what we can do is cut away the excess vinyl from the design. So for this, there's a lot of vinyl still left that we can save for another project. You can put these away in binders or little drawers and then that way you can use it for next time. It's really handy if you label them in advance so that way when you put it in a drawer everything is where it belongs. And there is the rest of our letters. We're going to work on weaving which is to remove the excess vinyl from the design. Because these letters are going to be um, applied individually I'm going to cut them into individual letters and weed them to remove all the extra vinyl from them and then we can work on applying them. How do you weed the letters? You can look at the shiny side, flip it over, make sure you're working with the matte side and then you're going to take a corner and start peeling from the corner and then slowly peel away the excess from your design working around the design so that you don't tear the design itself away. Now all that's left is the center of this design so we're just going to pull from the center there. And as you can see there's the finished letter. Just make sure that you keep it adhesive side up until you're ready to use it. So we're just going to work on the remainder of these doing the same steps. Our next step is to prepare our Dollar Tree burlap leaves. They come in a set of five and unfortunately they come with wires attached to them. Because I'm using a heat source with this, I really didn't want to have wires attached to it. So I'm just going through all of these and slowly removing the wiring from it. And as long as you're careful, it shouldn't impact how the leaf looks. They still look nice on the front. So we're just going to remove all the wires from the leaves um, that we're using iron on for. Okay, let's get working on what we need to make sure that we have prepared to get started. So the first thing I'm going to recommend is using either an easy press mat or a towel. And the reason that you want to use a mat or a towel underneath your project is to give it some stability. Also, it provides a barrier for the heat so that it doesn't go through to your work surface. So the easy press mats are often on sale. I'll leave links below in case you're interested. They are affiliate links as well as a iron-on protective sheet. If you don't have access to an iron-on protective sheet for this tutorial, try out some butcher paper or parchment paper as well. Both of those will work. You just need something to help dissipate the heat while you're working. We'll make sure that our leaves are ready to go and we don't want to have any excess um, adhesive on these, so just double check on those and make sure that they're clear and ready to go. You'll also want all of your letters pre-weeded and ready. I have them adhesive side facing up currently and I have them in order so they're ready to go. I'm also going to be using an easy press too for this tutorial and this one you can set and regulate the temperature and the duration of this. You can also use an iron. Just make sure that you follow the recommendations on Cricut's website. I'll leave a link to it below so that you can make sure that you're following the correct instructions. But I've already pre-checked on Cricut's heat guide website and we're going to be working with these leaves and the iron on vinyl 305 degrees for 30 seconds firm pressure. We're going to flip and press it for 15 seconds and then a cool peel. So we'll go through the steps one by one as we're doing it. Right now I'm going to set the easy press to the correct time and the temperature. So we're going to make sure we turn this on. It's set to 305 right now and I have it set for 30 seconds. All you have to do to adjust it is hit the button for temperature and then you can adjust that or hit the button for time and then you can adjust the time. And right now it's going to heat up and then we'll be ready to go. Our machine is ready to go so we're going to choose the leaves that we want to work with keeping in mind which direction we want the leaves to face. So if you wanted the leaves to face up you'll make sure to put your decal facing that direction. If you want the leaves to face down 
then you can do it that way as well. So let's zoom in so you guys can see this process a little bit better. I want the leaves for my banner to face down, so I'm going to face them that way. This is the back of it and this is the front, so I'm going to choose the front of the leaf facing this way. And we're going to take our first letter, which is the T and thankful, and we're going to decide where we want to place this on here. So I'm going to place it, I would say right around here I think is the best look for it. So we're going to give it a little bit of extra space, just making sure to center it and get an idea of where we want this to be. So what we're going to do is remember that there's an adhesive side on the back. So the shiny side is the side that you want to face up and you want the non-shiny side to face down. So what we're going to do is preheat this for five seconds. I'm going to put a protective sheet over this. You can use parchment paper or um, you can also use butcher paper if you don't have access to a Cricut iron-on protective sheet or a Teflon sheet or something similar. So we're going to preheat this for five seconds with pressure. Then we're going to remove this figure out where we want to place this. Remember, shiny side up, we want the carrier sheet to be on here, and then we're going to place this down, making sure that we have this even with where we want it. When you have it exactly where you want it, then what you can do is place your protective sheet over it, and you can place this over. We're gonna start the timer with firm pressure, and we're gonna leave this on for 30 seconds with firm pressure, and then we're going to flip and press it for 15 seconds after. Okay, then what we're gonna do is take this, we're going to take this and flip it, and then we're gonna put our sheet back over it again and we can either you can reset the timer and then start it or you can count it down by yourself whichever is the easiest for you okay we'll remove that take the sheet off from the corner. Remember, everything is hot when you're touching it, so be very careful when you're working with it. Now this should be cooling. We're gonna set this aside, and we're gonna work on the next one. So let's do an up-close camera perspective so you guys can see better. We're gonna place our the front of our leaf here down, and our first step is just to cover it with our protective sheet. We're going to preheat it for five seconds with firm pressure, and now we can remove that Let's take our letter and we're going to place it shiny side up here. We want the flat side to face here because it's adhesive. So we're going to place this right in here and kind of center it. And then what we do is we place our protective sheet right over it again. We're going to place the iron straight down onto it. We have our temperature set, so we're going to press the go button and we're going to apply pressure to it while watching it count down here. Okay, we'll remove that. Remove the sheet from the corner to be careful because it is hot. We're gonna take this, flip it over, put our sheet back down and press on it for 15 seconds. Now we're going to remove this. We're going to move this out of the way and let this cool before we touch it. Now let's take a look at our first few letters. And if you want to check and make sure that it's cooled completely, definitely kind of just sneak and, and check. And this has had plenty of time to cool since we've done multiple letters. And you can just kind of peel away the corner, lift it up and take a look and see if it is adhered. If it hasn't, put it back down and add a little bit more heat, maybe half of the time that you did previously in smaller increments. You don't want to overheat these. 
but this looks fine. So we're just peeling this away. And now this one's ready to go and we can use it for our project. So let's remove the sheets for the rest of these. We have two leftover pieces from the leaf cutouts that we used and so what we're going to do for this is take some of the Dollar Tree sunflowers and attach them to this using hot glue and we can start building our fall garland with that. what we're doing is we're starting with the Dollar Tree jute ribbon and we have our cute little um, sunflower one and so what I did is I measured out a length approximately I would say around eight feet and all I did was create little loops along every 10 inches so I'll show you real quick what I did is I measured out say a 10 inch gap in between and then I took this and I just created a little loop and then I just twirled it around my finger there and brought the loop through. And all that does is you take that and then you just pull it and then you have a loop. And then you can use that little loop to use hot glue and adhere that to the back of our burlap piece here, our burlap leaf. So all I did was hot glue that one on. So I started out already with one section. We're starting out with a sunflower first and then we're going to take our next loop and we're going to work in the order of the word. So if this is hanging down on that section that's on the left, then we're going to glue our word starting with thankful here. So the T is going to be the first one. I'm going to hot glue all of these in order and then we'll talk about adding the ribbon. We have this lovely buffalo check ribbon from Dollar Tree. If you're not a fan of the black and white, they also have this kind of red and cream one, which would be really pretty for fall. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring out an in, a 10 inch length on this one, and we're going to fill in the gaps on our little garland here in between with this ribbon. So let's work on tying that one and seeing how that one goes. Let's get a better close up look at this. So we're just gonna take our 10 inch length of ribbon, fold it in half, and try to make sure it's as symmetrical as possible. Then we're just gonna do slip this over, right in the center. Take our jute ribbon and cut a few inches in length. A little bit longer if you want a bow. If you just wanna tie it straight, you can use a shorter length of uh, the ribbon here. And then we're just placing this over and tying it. I'm going to double tie it so it doesn't come undone. You can add a bow if you'd like. A little bow on the top there. Then we're going to take our ribbon and just fold it in half. And this is the center portion. So we're working from the center portion and we're going to cut higher towards the ends here. So what happens is when you unfold it, you get this really nice um, effect there. And now you're all ready to hang up your banner and display it for fall. If you're going to make one, what word are you going to use for your banner? There's so many different possibilities. I just think it's really fun to play around with. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and check out our playlist. I have a ton of different Cricut and Dollar Tree DIYs just waiting for you to try out. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you later.